Hey, I want to welcome everybody to the Tuesday, March 5th uh, Cosmic Tower Q&A call. Nico's running a couple minutes late and he'll be joining us soon. He's uh, transitioning from the last five months in Egypt back to the United States today. And I'm not quite sure what he's going through right now because being 12 hours apart on the on the clock leads to a little bit of uh, disconnection at times. So he uh, he messaged me and told me he'll be here soon. And there's a fabulous topic um, that sets the stage for a lot of what's coming in the Cosmic mm -hmm. Tower um, that's available right now. So I thought we would start by uh, sharing that with you guys, and then we'll get into some of the the big news that we have. And um, you know, to to um, just kind of touch the big news for a second, and we'll we'll spend more on it later. Uh, Nico's just been in Germany. Meetings have been had, and this project is going to continue. Um, so we'll we'll get into the details of what that means. Um, it's it's such a such a welcome surprise and um, something we've just been holding space for since Harold died almost nine months ago. And it's just it's just unbelievable, um, really. So okay, so we're joined today by uh, Theo Lucier. He is a health researcher and um, he is a community member. We've been friends for it's got to be getting close to ten years now, and you know we've learned a ton from each other. And a lot of you probably recognize him already. And and he's been going off on this amazing tangent lately, where he's fascinated by measuring measuring energy, which makes total sense. Like he kind of, I saw him grow up as a biohacker, and then kind of I think Theo you know, that the the lines between like going inward to your body for generating your best world kind of blossomed out of you. And it was like, wait a minute, I can't have my best health if I'm in an environment that's poison. And so right. how do I create a safe home on a safe earth? Right? Like, you know, your, your perspective just really grew to be a whole different dimension. And so tell us a little bit about what you've been fascinated by over the last couple of years that have shifted your perspective, and then we'll start digging in as it applies to the project. Sure. Yeah. I got into subtle energy um, when I first interviewed Holland Franklin, which a lot of us know, um, and um, Patter introduced me to Holland, and um, she said something that always stuck with me. She said, you know, you can block, you can physically block all the EMF you want in your home, um, but you can't block the, the bad information uh, from the EMF, you can't block the scalar waves, they're still there. So you have to harmonize uh, the scalar waves in your home as well. And it took, it took a it, honestly, it took about a year for that to kind of settle in. And for me to be open to that message, I, I was very much in the um, scientific, you know, kind of left brain. Uh, if I can't measure it, then it doesn't exist mindset. Um, and, uh, Holland just started, you know, exposing me to a few techniques and different types of subtle energy and EMF harmonization technologies. And I experienced a few of them and it just, it worked like that. I mean, it was incredible. And after that, I was just, I was sold. Um, and, uh, I started using a lot of different harmonization technologies that kind of informed me when I got the cosmic towers uh in my house because i was able to um compare them to other things that i'd already had and i have a have a lot of that stuff in my house and um and on my person you know i'm always got my bio geometry and my pulsers and all kinds of things uh on me at all times and um uh on the subtle energy side i was still you know, I'm not one of those people that can just feel it directly with their body at all times. There are, I know people like that. I don't have that ability. So I got into dowsing and I started with the pendulum and then I went to the dowsing rods and, uh, and then, um, I started using something that was invented, uh, by Vern Cameron, who's probably America's most famous dowser of all time. Um, and he was right here in Southern California and San Diego specifically. He invented something called the Cameron Aura Meter, uh, which is still handmade today. Um, and uh, started learning how to use that. And then I got into the Lecker antenna 
which is a European device that has a lot of precision. And um, I found out about the Bovis scale and the Bovis scale is freely available. You can just type in Bovis scale on any search engine and it'll, it'll pull up printable examples of it that you can print out and use. But the Bovis scale was used, it was invented by a doctor around a hundred years ago, over a hundred years ago. And uh, he was looking uh, to evaluate uh, the energy content of foods, the vitality or life force of foods more specifically, uh, so he could feed his patients the best food and make sure that it helped them. And he got together with an engineer, and they created the Bovis chart or the Bovis scale. And um, I prefer to use it with the pendulum, so it looks like a Chinese fan. So it's flat at the bottom, and then it curves. And it starts at zero, and the old one went to 14,000. And 6,500 is considered neutral. So anything below that will take energy from the human system. It takes life force energy. Anything above that contributes to it. And your average house will be around seven to 8,000 uh, Bovis units um, pre cosmic tower and post cosmic tower. The last two that I measured were off. They were literally off the chart. Um, it stops at the old chart stops at 14,000. Um, and it just, the pendulum was just pegged and it, you know, it was wanting to go further, but it couldn't because the chart didn't have it. Now in the mid nineties, the chart was updated by somebody named Blanche Mares and she was a Swiss dowser. And uh, because the consciousness of humanity and our planet is changing and we went from the end of one age into another, um, which is recognized by, you know, most, uh, ancient cultures, you know, Kali Yuga to Satya Yuga. And we're now in the Aquarian age and we transitioned out of the old ones. So consciousness is, is rising on earth. I mean, maybe the cosmic tower is an expression of that a physical manifestation of that consciousness increase, but they, in, even in the mid nineties, uh, they had to modify the chart. So it now goes up to 36,000 Bovis units, which um, I'm excited because I'm going to go back and retest the same houses and, and see where they're at. But it was interesting to note that, you know, the chart goes from uh, physical to subtle energy to, um, spiritual kind of cosmic energy and that's the pendulum when I was measuring the house is just trying to go into that realm but the physical chart I was using didn't have it but I really like using the Bovis chart because it's free and it's available to anyone it works really fast it's really easy to use and um, it was specifically it started with food but you can measure the life force energy of of really anything uh, you can measure a, a room you can measure food you can measure um, special power spots on earth um, it's just something that i really enjoy doing so that's kind of the origin story of how i got into subtle energy and and measuring it um, i try not to get too crazy with it because you know subtle energy is is qualitative it's not quantitative you know it's it's I took a bite of this um, cinnamon roll and it was very sugary versus this cinnamon roll contains nine grams of sugar. You know, there's, there's a difference, but um, subtle energy quality is one of the things that as I got healthier and healthier and my physical body became detoxed and energized, I became more sensitive to subtle energies in that process. And I put a lot of time and effort into harmonizing that for myself to, to further, you know, kind of help my health. So yeah, hopefully that, uh, is that kind of the info it, you're looking for? Or? Yeah, that's great. It's been really fun to be alongside you on this journey. You know, I've been going through my own sensitivities and part of what I love about you is the way you're a researcher and you really want to know on uh, many levels of your being. And you, you want to measure and you want to know what's effective. You know, it's part of why I respect and admire the supplements that you create is I know when you work on formulations, you're working over a long period of time through measurement, through 
seeing the effectiveness in people and yourself um, to, to bring forth what you're bringing forth. So I really appreciate that. And I appreciate that there's been this, you know, winding journey where we've interlapped so much around structured water, but now you've really gotten passionate about the cosmic tower and, you know, guys, uh, Theo does a little bit of, of, um, online marketing as, as part of how he engages in the world. And, you know, he sent an email out about the cosmic tower and he was shocked to see how many people on his list just jumped in and, and purchased towers. It was, there was a lot of engagement. He went through a lot of questions. And so he has developed this, um, thing he's doing with people who are investigating cosmic towers where he's measuring their homes before they get the tower and then afterwards to help them have a numerical representation with regard to the change in their house. And I just think that's really cool. And I want to, I want to, Nico's arrived a few minutes ago. So I want to use that as a way to um, open up another topic here and kind of keep us, keep us moving forward into the other aspects of the Q and A. So um, March 19th, we're doing something that we've never done before. It's at the uh, same time slot, the 3 p.m. Eastern time, and it'll be in the same Zoom room, uh, this link that you have that you're using for today, March 19, 3 p.m. Eastern time. There's been a project incubated from inside the Cosmic Tower community, and it has been interacting with Cosmic Towers and bodies of water, lakes and ponds, and using the towers and the water to work together to raise vibration and create additional harmony. Now that that project has matured for a while, we want to take it from the small group that's been incubating it and take it to the whole community. And we want to, there's a whole bunch of people that are specifically invited to this. So if you have a tower, you're specifically invited to the March 19th event. If you know how to measure things like using a bovis scale the way Theo does, or a different thing like David Hawkins uh, measurements using consciousness or um, biogeometry as a third. So Nico's been doing a lot of biogeometry this year. And so has Mike who incubated the project. So any of those ways of measuring, or maybe you're an intuitive dowser and you just measure in your own way, all the ways of measuring are welcome on that call. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk out as a community about how we can work with the cosmic towers and water to raise the vibration on this planet. And we're going to measure our results in the different ways that we know how to measure. It's really exciting opportunity. And you don't have to own a tower to participate and you don't have to be a sensitive or capable of measuring. You could just be interested in all of that. So um, I think this, this call on the 19th is gonna to appeal to, to a lot of people. And I hope that you all will be there. And also, if there was ever a time that you wanted to invite new people to understand the Cosmic Tower Project, this would be a really good event for that. So I'm expecting a, a really big turnout for that. Um, Nico, do you want to say anything else about the March 19th event? Um, no, other than uh, Mike brought it to us. And uh, I always like to measure, right? Because even though we're all sensitive and we can feel, it's still nice to be able to quantify it. And what I've learned from studying the biogeometry is how complementary it is with the cosmic power. It's not like, should I do biogeometry or the cosmic power? No, they're beautiful complements. And it's all about bringing those together. And also the cosmic towers, a lot of people might initially purchase them or get a cosmic tower, hoping it will solve all their problems. But ultimately the towers are here for a help to help us. And it's when we work with the towers together that it becomes so much more stronger. So I feel that the Cosmic Tower Network is going into this next phase too, to where people are actively working with the tower and also as a community. And that's what I really like. So I'm really excited about that call because we've had some amazing results. And it's one thing coming from Harold or coming from me or some of the people that have the experience but here are people that joined that had maybe no experience with the cosmic tower and that use the biogeometry and we're able to verify the results that we intuitively already felt. So yeah, I'm really excited about this project. And also the lakes are so important and the bodies of water. So getting those to a higher vibration affects all of us. So yeah, very excited. 
That's great. And Theo, I know you plan to be there and, you know, appreciate the measurement capabilities that you'll bring to that. And um, if anybody is inspired by what we were sharing with Theo, feel free to message him directly in the chat and engage with him in the in the areas of subtle energy measurement. Um, I am trying to get him to turn that into a consulting business, and he is following his passion and his excitement about learning. And somewhere those things are going to meet. And so if we just keep showing him our interest and engaging with him, he'll become who he's supposed to be in all of this and we'll all get served in the way that we want to. So I want to, I want to keep, Theo, I've now done it publicly. So I want to keep, uh, keep pushing on that and it'll, um, it'll, it'll get to wherever it's supposed to go, whatever its fullest expression is. So well, it's, it's all, it's all great. I just put my email in the chat. If anybody has questions i just i really really like talking about this stuff and i love uh, approaching subtle energy from a practical perspective and uh, and i know you know many other people do too like nico and patter i mean i i besides the emf harmonization the other main reason i push so hard to learn how to measure subtle energy was to measure the ingredients my suppliers were sending me for the supplements. Um, you know, the supplement industry can be challenging. Uh, it often lacks integrity. And um, besides the lab test, which I do for all my ingredients, I wanted to measure the actual vitality and life force of, of the raw ingredients I used to make the blends. And uh, it works really well. You know, I'm and and even when people contact me and ask me to mail out their supplement to my newsletter readers, um, I measure it. I measure it on the biogeometry scale, the Bova scale, and uh, with the Lecker antenna to see, like, hey, where where is this thing at? Is it actually does it contain energy? Does it contain good energy, or is it is it overstimulating? Is it is it old? Does it have mold in it? You know, these are all things that that uh, I, I can now use this knowledge of subtle energy measurement to do, which is, it's really exciting. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, like somebody just pulled the blindfold off and you see this whole other layer of reality you didn't even know existed. So it's, it's fun. I mean, why not? You know? So if anybody wants to email me with questions and things, I'm more than happy to, to answer them. And, that includes stuff about the tower. I don't know as much uh, about the tower as, as Nico and Patter, but I do have a couple and I work with them nearly daily and, and um, I love them. So we can go from there. That's amazing. Awesome. Well, thanks for your participation. Um, so Nico, before we get to the questions that have been um, sent in, um, I think it's important to kind of hit the, the main topic, which is, um, you know what we what we're ready to share about your trip to germany and and um you know it it's uh it's a big it's a big day in the cosmic tower project and there's there's big change um and so why don't you fill us in a little bit about about that sure and i'll, I'll share as much as i can right and i actually had a a meeting with uh Anche, harold's wife and uh, that was really nice to just hear from her what Carl's wishes were and then how she really wanted the project to continue, but she really can do it herself. And all that she wanted was that the project to be continued and, you know, by the right people and just knowing that she trusts us with it. And that she that we have her support to continue it, even though she cannot be a part of it. Uh, that was really amazing. So I spoke with Anja on the Thursday before I left for Germany, and and we have her support to continue it. And then yeah, I went to Germany and actually uh, met with the people that manufacture the Cosmic Tower, and it, it was beautiful to feel how sensitive they are and all the work i mean it's really incredible what goes into it and the craftsmanship and just the energetics of it the cosmic tower is not something you can just send off to china and have it replicated cheaply i mean it's really a craftsmanship and 
the quality of the work all the way throughout it's 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 really amazing and then also harold you know how many towers he still produced and actually i want to put this just as a as a question to the community and you can type your answer into the chat how many towers do you think that harold sold in three years so put your number in there. I'm just curious to hear, and I, I would love to share the number that I've found out and uh, give you some time to put the answer in there. I mean, I got to tell, I was blown away when I heard the number. I mean, just how Harold and Harold pretty much, I'm not going to say he carried this on his own, but he was like the driving force behind this. And he was doing lectures all throughout Europe. And um, he would drive in his van. I'm not going to say he would deliver every single big cosmic tower himself, but he did a lot of them. These, these were his babies and he would be driving and I'd be on the phone with him. Where are you, Harold? I'm in Spain, heading to Germany, and then I'm going to Holland and maybe we can meet in Belgium. I mean, he was really, really all over. And um, Anche did share that he really wanted this to be a community project and that he had a sense of knowing that he was gonna go and i didn't know that and it was good to hear uh this from ansha and that he really yeah when he left the body he um you know took a different role in the project and it was really also his wish to have a more active part even in the energetics of it and i know many of you have felt that have felt this presence and we surely have i mean there were times where I didn't know after he passed and I got questions or things that I had to do with towers and he just popped in and he just was there. And it was nice to know and hear it directly from his wife, how he really wanted this to raise it to the next level to where it's not about the dark and the light, but really about love and creating this harmonious grid for, for the planet. And when I went to Germany, I mean, you don't know if you're going to meet the manufacturer, but there was this immediate like heart connection and this openness and the team there that manufactures the cosmic towers. Just to let you know, I mean, how much of a perfectionist Harold was. It couldn't just be any wood. There couldn't be any blemishes. So there was only one particular um company in uh, Scandinavia, I believe it's in Denmark, where they, he could get the wood from. So um, Harold really put all his money into continuing the project. And he uh, completed a bunch of uh, four meter towers. There were still six of them, like sitting there. And he was working on the six and the eight meter towers. But then unfortunately, uh, he wasn't able to finish that. But the good thing from our point of view is that all the knowledge, all the know-how on how to build the towers, it's there in Germany. And we have the right people to do it. I mean, there's things to be sorted out from a logistics point of view. And it's it's not it's not a simple project. And there's a lot of things you might not even take into consideration. And I have to tell you, I learned a lot from being there. So a lot of the questions about the crystals, et cetera, where I didn't know the specifics. Now that I've seen it, I can answer those questions uh, uh, in a better way. And yeah, I was really touched by it to see all the people that worked on the towers and just how invested they were in this project and what a beautiful community. And that's really what we're looking forward to, to really do this globally and do it as a community, right? The Cosmic Towers, as much as they help you individually, what always attracted me to this project was, hey, this is about the collective. This is about the earth. This is about the community. And I always feel like if we want to get out of the situation we're in, at this planet or if we want to get to a higher level it's not one person a politician or a doctor or a, le or a ceo that's going to get us out of it it's about us rising to a new level of consciousness and us taking responsibility 
for our environment, for the harmony on our planet. And what that's what I like about the Cosmic Tower, that all of us, we can improve our own lives, but also from the people around us, from all living creatures, from all of life that's within the range of the, of the Cosmic Tower. Amazing. So um, that was a playful way to ask people about how many Harold sold. So we got a range, <laughs> a range from 500 to 5,000 with the most answers in the 3,000 to 3,500 range. And so if you, if we didn't specify there, I think per year or over three years, but if you're talking three years and 3,000, thousand a year, you're talking roughly three a day, try, um, try seven times that guys. Harold sold 25,000 towers in three years and how he did that and made them and delivered them. I mean, talk about a vacuum created by this guy. I, I Yeah. Wow. Wow. Definitely covers it. I mean, he was a force. And so one of the things that's um, that's really emerging in the project now is uh, the community-based aspect of it. And, you know, when it came to North America, that was a really important value. And now it's kind of uniting between North America and Europe, and it's uniting among a lot more people. And so what I would say to people um, globally, people who might listen to this replay, is there is no email with the company anymore. Chi Balance is not corresponding. There's nobody there. And the new place to have all of your correspondence globally is support at thewellnessenterprise.com. And that'll mostly be me on the other side of that email address responding to you. And we don't have control over everything. It's not that kind of project. So we're stewards and we're playing a role. And so when you write in and I say, I don't know the answer to that one yet, please try back in two months. It, I'm sequencing all of it as best I understand all the players and somebody might show up tomorrow that plays a key role and does something different. So in terms of getting very specific with you right now, the most specific thing that I can say is that efforts are um, active and decided. They're underway right now to secure European inventory in a place that it would be possible to transfer it and deliver it to people. The logistics around all of that are extraordinary. There's so many countries and so many different things to pay attention to. And we're starting to recognize right, by having gone through this winter here in the United States, that there may be some call to do things a little bit differently. There's a benefit to taking the inventory and dispersing it and then allowing people to come in and re and pick up their own tower and take it home. And that includes a bunch of things. Um, you don't have to ship them, so you don't put them in the hands of this whole shipping infrastructure. And you know that shipping infrastructure is as rough as as there is in the world. Like they just they just don't care. They just move so many packages. Maybe they do care, but but the experience, it can be a little rough in interacting with them. So we can bypass all of that by putting the logistics in our own hands. But think about that, like having a store of towers in every country and, and the management of that, there's going to be a, there's going to be a graceful and natural unfoldment. So if you're listening and you have capacity to store towers in your location, and to develop a trustworthy relationship with the project that, that that might happen and that you'd be able to interact with the towers that were in, in your custody, maybe you can become a, a drop point or a pickup point. One of the beautiful aspects of, of dispersing the distribution that way is then when people, let's say somebody wants to buy a 35, but they go to pick it up, maybe they have to drive four hours, but they get to a location where there's a 250. And then they get to have the interaction with that human being and that tower. And that's a whole different level of relationship that I think we all yearn for in life. So support at thewellnessenterprise.com is going to get you answers to all of that. But imagine coordinating that globally, right? That's, that's going to just be patient 
and we'll we'll get to all of it. So if you're we're getting a lot of questions out of Europe, you know, there's a there's a backlog of um, desire to order, and the best way to um, to to uh, deal with that right now is send an email to support at the wellness enterprise.com and put in the subject line. I want to order a CT 35 in Sweden or whatever. And you put your logistics and then we will do our best to start sorting that out. So an inventory is going to come into that network's possession and it is going to get pushed as widely as possible. And then they're going to be coordinators. And what we're going to do is we're going to separate the price of purchase for the Cosmic Tower from the logistics of getting it delivered. And the, the logistics are not going to be included in the price. And so people are going to determine whether they're going to go and pick their own tower up and, and have the cost of picking it up be their gas and their time, or whether they pay somebody to coordinate that for them. And then we're going to have all the different people in all the different countries to pay for that. So it it's it's a big thing. But the, the, the most important part is it's moving forward, right? It's moving forward. And the value, I ask you to just keep listening from the value that we're holding. We're, we're holding that this is a community-based project. So if you think about it, instead of I'm ordering from Amazon and I want this now, right? Which has been something that's been ingrained in the culture that I don't think this community is any part of, but it exists out there to, wow, how can I further this project? And how can my getting a tower, you know, you might have to drive 10 hours to get a tower and you might want to, and you might then say, hey, I'll do that three weeks from now. And you might deliver towers on your way back to other people who are wanting them. We can, we can really help each other and in doing that, we make relationships. And I bet, you know, more than one person is going to have a, a warm cup of tea or or even a, a bowl of soup or stew with somebody from this community where we serve one another and we get to know one another. And, and honestly, being at the center of all of this and having the privilege to interact with so, so many of you, it's the richest part is the relationship. So this is a way for you all to become more involved in um, in each other's lives. So um, Nico, as I give you some space there to while unfolding that, is there anything else that you want to kind of fill in around the edges about about the new news? Um, not really. I mean, we're taking it one step at a time, and that's how this project has always been. Right? This project was never ran, you know, by Patter or me, but it's really, you know, the consciousness that is driving it. And you notice as the desire is there for towers to come in an area, the avenues open up. And that's how we're just going to do it one step at a time. This is not a left brain thing of planning like a big uh, corporation. And now we're going to do this market. It's never been like that. It's the towers that uh, drive it from, from a higher realm. And we are just basically you know, the stewards here in the physical to help facilitate that and to follow that guidance that we are receiving. And it's beautiful. I, I love it. I mean, I also come from a traditional background in corporations and you see how they try to plan and force everything. And I never really gelled with that. And for me, this is this is beautiful because ultimately it is about building community. And for me, the towers are a way for like-minded people to come together that want a more harmonious planet and to bring all of us together. I mean, ultimately, we talk about the grid and the ley lines. We are the grid. All of us are like cosmic towers as we start radiating our own light and start connecting. And that's how I see the future unfold. So we don't know how it's going to go, but I do know it's very much guided and we just take the next step. Beautiful. I want to put one more thing out there because I know this video will reach an uh, international audience and even there are some international people here. As far as I can tell, as somebody who's going to be in all the logistics conversations and, and um, you know, causing that, there's a there's a bit of uh, interest out of Australia, pretty consistent interest out of Australia. And I wanted to just lay out there the way I see that working currently until people come along and actually make it happen. There will be a coordinator for Australia. 
that person might bring capital to the situation or they might just bring energy to the situation. We will take all people who are interested in purchasing towers in Australia and direct them to that one person. That one person will gain commitments from people over time. It's probably going to take a bunch of months, if not a year or two. And they will keep getting those commitments of interest, like I'll buy this tower, I'll buy that tower, I'll buy this tower, I'll buy that tower. And once we get to the point where there's enough people willing to buy enough towers that we can fill the smallest um, uh, uh, temperature protected container. So we're talking a container. I, I think the smallest one's probably gonna be 10 feet. Um, we've done a 20 footer before, but I think we could probably get a 10 footer. So however many towers it takes to fill that, that's the minimum order to open Australia because we got to ship those towers in, in a way that protects them and that creates enough of a splash energetically to build build the network. And that's what Harold did with us in the US, except it was not a 10 foot container, it was a 40 foot container. That was our first order. So we th we'll try and do it uh, smaller. So if you're thinking about a country that, um, that you want to lead, um, this is this is what we're looking at. Um, and a combination of um, people with capital that are willing to put that in to hold the inventory, people with um, logistical capability to distribute it once it's there, um, people with trusted locations so the inventory can be spread out, and then people to say, I'm willing to buy the tower. And if you ask me to, if you're ready to roll, you know, I'll place my order to let that money go up front to bring them in. So that that model can be replicated for anywhere. Um, frankly, I'd love to see that emerge for Canada too, because the the U.S. to Canada thing is you know, it's not great. Um, we'd rather we'd rather get direct into Canada. Um, so it's an invitation. If you're out there and you're you're really enthused in this project, we want to know, and um, you know we want to know what your passion is and what your resources are. All right, Nico, I think we're ready for the spreadsheet. Questions? Yeah. Okay. Um, does the Cosmic Tower help? Oh, you know what? I didn't give you all a chance to talk. So does anybody want to jump in and ask a question or or um, engage any dialogue about what's just been shared? Because that's a it's a big it's a big change. And um, yeah, I love it when it's a community conversation. So you can wave. Uh, oh, looks like Jordan just unmuted herself. Um, yes, I'm wondering. Uh, let's say we decide, okay, we have space, we're willing to be stewards, whatever uh, we can do. Um, uh, do we just send them to you regarding uh, support at wellnessenterprise.com regarding questions on, I'd say, similar devices? Oh, you mean like comparative devices, that kind of stuff that you've asked about? Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't know how much of an appetite there is in the project for that. You know, I I I <laughs> along the way to figuring out what I wanted to be in the structured water industry, back in 2012 when I started, there wasn't like a book or a manual or somebody else selling two different types of structured water. In fact, as far as I can tell, there really wasn't anybody in the world who decided to jump off the diving board that I did, which was, hey. I'm going to sell just structured water and that's going to be my whole business pursuit. Everybody else was like in another business and doing this as a side gig. And so I had to figure out all the comparisons and eventually those comparisons led to something that was um, astounding, which is the Aqua Energizer. And, and once the Aqua Energizer was produced in 2020, I terminated selling new devices from other companies because I'm, I'm not interested. They're, they're not what the Aqua Energizer is. And we have uh, John Head who just joined, uh, John and wave your hand, who just joined the call. John was intimately involved with the EES system before getting involved with the Cosmic Tower project. And now um, if anybody is um, going down the lines of, um, of 
looking at an EES system or thinking about making a deposit on the EES system or, you know, wondering about the comparisons of the EES system, John is now affiliated with the Cosmic Tower Project that we send all those people to him to talk to about it. And Nico and I stand really clearly, like Nico does a great job of holding the position of everything has value. The EES system has value. It's, it's made a mark on the world. And I'm a little bit more black and white. Like, the cosmic tower is better than the ES system for me, you know, and, and I, I'm just, I'm just, you know, like kind of a little more black and white about that and straight up about it. So. Right. And do you have the capacity to, and the expertise to communicate that because there's seven devices similar that could be, uh, I'd, I'll call it either complementary or competitors of the cosmic tower. There's about eight cosmic tower and seven others that I found. Yeah, so I, I I would say that what we're engaged in is we're certain about the quality of the Cosmic Tower project, and we're certain about what we're doing, and that's what we're doing. And so we're not here to be the harmonizers of everything that life sends or that somebody creates. God has, or God, life creator, has given us an invitation right? Nico got drawn. He just got magnetized to go and meet Harold in person. He just went and fell to 250 and his jaw dropped. He melted in that experience. And then he brought one back and he put it in my space and everything that happened, all the unfoldment of it, tell Nico and I, we're living the right purpose we're we're where we're supposed to be doing what we're doing and you know no better evidence than we've literally sat for eight months since harold died eight and a half months with no certainty no clarity no uh surety and just this this resonance in our hearts of wow we really love this project we wish we could do more with it and not knowing whether that would ever be the same show up for all the q a calls keep doing everything that we're doing and you know, just letting it unfold itself. So the unfoldment of the Cosmic Tower project is very clear, and and it's not unfolding being the experts of all the other devices that are in the world. That's not what we're doing. Okay. And so there may be wonderful devices, and if you're researching seven, maybe you want to have a business that differentiates those seven. I don't. I want to unfold the Cosmic Tower project, and I think that there's a there's a focus of energy that comes from my declaring that publicly like this and answering you so straight. Like this isn't, this isn't a polite answer. It's a, it's, it's the authentic answer of, of what's inside of me. So I'm called to unfold the cosmic tower project and I'm going to put a hundred percent of me into that. Okay. So it sounds like regarding whether if someone else puts up another device and, you know, let's say, you know, I have, I'll call it like a cosmic tower warehouse, then you know, that just let that unfold, you know, what happens? Yeah, it, it'll unfold. Like if, if God wants me involved, God will send me customers who say, hey, I'm really interested in the cosmic tower, but I heard about this cosmic tower warehouse project, right? This competitor and it's way better. And then they'll call me three months later and be like, I invested in this other thing and my life is so much better. And they'll be all excited and they'll be sharing that with me. And then I'll notice. And there's a way that God does that that makes it really obvious to me about where I'm supposed to be. And so if I'm along the way, when I started with the structured water, I only sold one technology. And then like I had the next one in my hands for two years before I was sure I wanted to sell it. My capacity to, dis to disseminate and understand, um, disseminate was the wrong word, but to understand, discern, that's what I'm looking for, to discern subtle energy and the difference between two structured water devices was minimal. I wasn't surrounded by the community I am now of, of people like Theo and John Head who, who do these measurements and Nico and lots of people who do these measurements. So that, um, that process went through a migration. And now with all this measurement and all this capability and embodiment of vibrational and frequency energy understanding, I just feel so clear. And so part of being clear is that supporting this project globally is a massive undertaking that takes the enrollment of many people being their own passion and purpose. And that does not involve being distracted into other things.
There's, there's more places to put my focus than I can ever put it in every day that I wake up. So this is, this is what we're up to. And if God wants our attention on something else, God will just pull our attention right there. It's no problem. So I hope, I hope that's helpful, Jordan. Thank you for, for your question. Does anybody else have any questions or, or anything before we uh, transition to our, our um, place where we've recorded questions that were sent in before the call? Okay. Well, if you do, feel free to raise your hand. We love talking with you uh, live. All right. Here it is, Nico. Um, does the cosmic tower help reduce the effects of the solar flares? Uh, well, Harold uh, talked to me about that one time, not so much the smaller towers, but what he explained is that the big towers have the ability to, in a sense, buffer the energy that comes in. Right? I think most of you, uh, we know when there's a lot of solar flare activity, we can sense it. And uh, it can sometimes be destabilizing if it all comes in in a matter of hours. Sometimes, so the way Harold explained it to me is that especially the large cosmic towers have the ability to buffer that energy to where it doesn't all hit you in a few hours, but to where it gets spread out over a, over a few days, he, um, even to where, or a few weeks, he would explain, to where we basically have more time to integrate these energies, because I very much believe that the solar flare and the solar activity is very much related to our own consciousness and the upgrades that we are receiving. And sometimes it can simply be too intense. So see as the cosmic power having the ability to buffer that energy to where you don't have to process it in a matter of hours or days, but can get days or weeks to, to um, process the energy and to get acclimatized to those new changes that are coming into our being. Uh, thanks, Nico. Marcy, I see you there. Yeah, go ahead and unmute yourself. What size are you saying? Is it 75 and up or is it the 200? Like the 220s. Yeah, the 220s and up, yes. 220s and up. Yeah, because th those reach very high too, right? Even though the toroidal field is flattened of those, they go pretty high up in the atmosphere. Thank also. you, Nico. Welcome. Okay, um, Nico, with the cosmic tower pulling from the higher realms, how do we know the entity energy is positive and always will remain so? Mm -hmm. So the way Harold explained that is where they are connected in these higher realms is above where the distortion is. So Harold would talk about the dark forces, right? And he said they would reach into certain realms. He says the cosmic towers are connected um, above that, but also the cosmic towers are not about this dark versus light. It's about the transcendence in these higher realms. These higher realms are not as polarized as what we're accustomed to in our reality. So for us, it's also to level up in a sense, because if you're a light worker fighting the dark, you're equally part of keeping this whole war energy going. It's about transcending this. I mean, even if you look at the, the yin-yang sign, within the yin is the seed for the yang. And otherwise, it's not like you're, it's always like going to be all light from now on. It's only going to be daylight. There's no, never going to be dark anymore, right? So I would like to say it's about harmonizing, about finding a balance between the two. So uh, that's how that's how would I I would answer that question. Awesome. Um, do you know if anyone who has had a cosmic tower uh, support during childbirth? That's a great question, and I didn't know of anybody personally. So I reached out to Yvonne in Holland, and she actually told me. And I hope this is the right word in English: a doula, somebody that helps uh, deliver. You know, new children, there's actually one in Holland and she has a big cosmic tower in her home and she has one in her practice. And um, one of the things that I remember, I think 10 years ago, I read a book from Drunvalo Melchizedek and he talked about um, children being birthed with the assistance of dolphins. 
in 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 the water and how all those childbirths what they noticed that the dolphins would use their sonar and their energy field to really relax the mother and i don't know the specifics anymore so don't quote me on this but what i do remember was that all of the the childbirth all the deliveries they were all painless without the use of any anesthetics and then i think they even tracked all those children through life and they all had an iq of over 150 now i'm not going to say it's going to be like this for the cosmic tower, but something is to be said for the way children arrive in this world. I mean, think about the hospital with all the EMF, with the bright artificial lights, and you just basically get yanked out. I know from my own hypnosis background, I had to redo my own birth in regression because I really didn't feel like coming into this world. You know, I, I it, it just was so chaotic and. I believe if children can birth in a more natural way and in a harmonious environment, I truly believe that that's a big part to having less trauma in this world and healthier children on all levels, right? I'm not just talking about physical, I'm talking emotional, mental, and spiritual. So um, Yvonne promised me that she would reach out to this person and seeing if she would love to share her experiences of what she's noticed in her practice, but I haven't heard back on that yet, but I'm really curious to find out. But from where I stand and from my opinion, the more harmonious, the more natural the environment, both physically and especially energetically, the better the process is gonna go and the better for everybody involved. Beautiful. Um, I love um, I love that the project's been in existence for a couple of years and that people with deep expertise are engaging with it and um, bringing it into their way of life. It's so cool um, to, to learn from them. I look forward to hearing more about that. Um, okay, my air purifier um, negative ion doesn't work anymore and I plan to order a CT35. I was wondering if it has any effect on negative ions too. Yeah, so remember, the cosmic tower creates this toroidal field that structures, as Theo very well knows, all the waters that are within, within its sphere of influence. That also includes the water in the air, right? We have humidity. So imagine all those water structures being structured also and creating more uh, negative ions in the air we breathe. Actually, one of the comments we get often from people when they're cosmic tower, when they get their cosmic tower, is like, the air is so much better in my home. It smells much better. How is this possible, right? And I think that's a big part of it, that the water in the air gets structured. And as a part of that, as that hexagonal structure, gets created in the water, in the air that we breathe in, there's more negative ions. And Harold actually told me that one time they tested it and they had a room where they had a cosmic tower. And I don't remember the exact numbers, but it was a low number, maybe a hundred negative ions uh, in the air per cubic centimeter or whatever the measurement was. And then they put a bigger tower, I believe a 180 in the room. And they measured it two hours later, and it went up like 20-fold, like 2,000 negative ions uh, in the air. So yeah, absolutely, the Cosmic Tower uh, will help with that, because there is water in, in the air, and it structures all the water that's, with, that's within its field. Awesome. I don't currently own a tower, but have really enjoyed your presentations. I practice a daily meditation contemplation technique. And if I owned a tower, I would want to do my practice with the tower in some near proximity to me. It would be interesting to hear from those who practice meditation, contemplation, prayer techniques, and owning a tower. What is their experience? Do they feel their practice is enhanced in some subtle or more tangible ways? Well, I want to open it to the community on that one. I know a lot of people here meditate and do energy practices, but from my own experience, because it creates this natural harmonious energy field, energy field, even when I'm inside somewhere, I feel more like I'm in nature. And I believe it was Theo when I was talking with him and he had his energy sensitive friend with him. 
she compared the energy of the cosmic power to sitting somewhere on a mountaintop and feeling that beautiful energy. So absolutely. But yeah, I'm very interested in hearing what other people have noticed that, that are on the call and maybe even you, Patter, with your experience in meditation. From my experience, it's just be, it's like being in nature. It's much calmer and you just get to this tranquil meditative state much faster than you would usually in an urban or in a city environment being exposed to all kinds of um, EMF and non-native EMFs. Yeah, I, I find that um, my my awareness of the difference that it makes goes in and out. And that one of the things that um, I enjoy about being near a tower is um, the the depth of connection and the speed of it when I put my focus there seems really fast and really deep. And so, you know, if I go to meditate, I may or may not effectively get myself in a reasonable time period to where I want to be. But when I focus with the tower, most often it's really fast and really deep. And I, I, um, I love that aspect of it. I know Zane's going to answer this question, and uh, I wonder if if anybody else is going to. Um, you're all welcome to. Um, what are you going to share, Zane? Well, after just three weeks from receiving my CT seventy five, who I call Grace, um, I noticed changes in my Qigong practice, like the focus yet relaxed empty feeling was palatable i mean it was um so it went up an octave for sure right up pretty fast and up to that point i hadn't i'm, I'm recovering from lyme disease and it's affected my mobility for like 20 years or so and since its arrival i am now hiking i could only walk like 100 yards or so um, so I am, I'm, I used to run my dog with a car, sheep dog, um, but no more. We walk together. I throw the stick. He gets his exercise. It's all good. And um, my gait is flowing. It's like no hobble anymore, no adjusting, which the whole, everything is getting reconfigured. And I know I'm deep into the Qigong out here in New Mexico, uh, in the wilds of the Gila, but um, it's perfect setting for practice. And the camaraderie of my grace is, is really something. It's um, It just gets deeper. So that's my share. That's amazing. I want to go with a, on a hike with you, Zane. That's just so amazing to picture you <laughs> hiking. That's so happy. Uh, wow. Um, uh, anybody else want to talk about their um, the impact on meditation with having a tower? John, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So I um, there's a new group forming in the Fort Worth area that's more of about energetic healers and people focus. And so I brought my tower to them like early in the day to where the event was going to be held. I asked anybody to come early and sit with it and whatever. One of the chiropractors said it was the clearest communication I've had with beyond myself sitting with the tower that I've ever had. It was like I was having a conversation with something higher spiritual value than me. And he has been outstanding by it. And he's going, do you have anything else I can just try with? So I loaned him my mini. He's going, okay, we got to talk. So I'm scheduled to visit with him next week. So he's really engaged with it. And he says, because he works with the uh, chiropractic uh, practice called Network Chiropractic, taught by Donnie Epstein. And it's all about the etheric and in anchoring into the body or moving what's in the body out, outside of the etheric, whatever that all looks like. And I'm not sure I have their language correct. But he said it was the most moving experience he's had in a long time. So. Yeah, beautiful. The network spinal guys like the the towers. the The one that's owned in uh, Asheville is um, mm -hmm. is with a network spinal person. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a good it's a good fit. You know those those subtle measurements. 
Well, that's great. Uh, anybody else want to share anything about meditation and their tower? Yes. I Go found ahead. that uh, it makes you neighborly. So uh, I've been involved with the Joel Goldsmith group, and I call them my Christian spiritual group. But uh, but basically, in the there are these letters that uh, newsletters that the now deceased uh, founder was would, would send out to his community, and one of them uh, he wrote how you know, if you were really in harmony nature, you'd experience how it's like a family. So with the tower, it, it was very clear. Uh, uh, having the experience what he was referring to so for, like uh i think that once the network is fully up in north america that we may even see like there'll have to be people who are conduits for it that you know uh, so J joel goldman smith said the caps of god's kingdom are, aren't bird chasers and some other things like that and how you see uh, and people say it's abnormal, like a mother cat uh, protecting baby chicks. So I think with the energy of the cosmic tower, we'll uh, see a lot more of that. Okay, great. Thanks for sharing, Jordan. Um, okay. And, and we keep getting one more, so I'll just keep checking. Anybody else want to share on this? Uh, I live in a really, well, part part of the year I live in a dense urban area and um, I had some neighbors that were uh, not very neighborly um, very very loud at all all times and um, since I have the towers they've quieted down and I I mean I, I literally have not heard from them since they're just quiet it's it's kind of amazing um, they must just feel more calm yeah Nice. It, it, it's amazing how many times we get that comment, actually. People that said, I wouldn't get along with my neighbors. And uh, all of a sudden, like, we're getting along. Or even to the extremes, my neighbors moved out. Uh, but either way, the, the environment got more harmonized. And I also want to mention for those that don't haven't meditated or sat with your tower the people i mean i interact with a lot of people about their tower experiences and those that had i mean most had really really good results but those that really had like the excellent amazing results they all had one thing in common and they say every every day i sit with my tower for 10 20 30 minutes in silence so don't just ask your tower to do things for it, but also open yourself to receive from it, right? And that happens in the silence. Beautiful. Okay, thanks everybody for jumping in. Uh, Nico, I'm 34 miles away from Space Force Base and NORAD in Colorado Springs. How would the Cosmic Tower 220 interact with that energy? Are there any known interactions with military or technological resources that are not permitted or tolerated within a certain distance from facilities? Well, so we have 25,000 towers in Europe of which 800 to 20 and above. So we're definitely covering a lot of military bases. So uh, from a technological point of view, there's never been like, hey, somebody came and knocked at my door and say, you're interfering. Uh, with us, but just remember that the cosmic power just creates a natural harmonious field. So it's going to harmonize and whatever is going on in those bases, uh, technologically or otherwise, that might be not so beneficial. Just think of it harmonizing that. So yeah, I think it's really good to have them close to their to the military bases. And no, we've never had any issues of like, hey, this is interfering with our technology, but just creating more harmony in the environment and in the area. Awesome. I'm an artist and the tower aesthetic isn't what I would love placed in my living room. Is there a way to incorporate the internal structure of the tower in a maple wood piece of art that I make? I could create to specific requirements if that is feasible. Yeah, so unfortunately, the towers are made uh, to very specific, um, you know, specifications. 
if you want to call it that. And every detail matters. And I even got more of an appreciation for that when I went to Germany and see the care that goes into it. And then also how much of a perfectionist Harald was, even for the appearance of the towers, to make sure there's no blemishes on there, to make sure it's absolutely um, perfect. So yeah, we don't have any leeway in that. They are designed that way. I'm not saying that that couldn't change uh, down the road, but for right now, there's a very, there's a lot of thought that went into this and they're made really um, to have the function that they have and everything is, is a part of that. So um, yeah, for that person, there's nothing we can do about that right now. And they're gonna be produced the way that, that Harold wanted to produce them because we know that they work and they work that way. Sounds good. Could someone get on a plane with a 75 and travel to Australia? Nick? I can. Well, I mean, it's not Australia, but I went from LA to through Paris to Cairo and then from Cairo to Luxor, Egypt. And we're doing the same thing tomorrow with my 75. And I, of course, I had a, I got a special case for it which was like a hard case that they used to transport camera equipment and, and lights in. And then you have to make sure it's padded well. And obviously it has to go as checked luggage, but uh, it got here well and in one piece. So absolutely you can travel with it as long as you have, you know, a really protective case because we all know that check baggage in an airplane is not always treated with the most respect or in a gentle way. So put the fragile stickers on there or tell the airlines to do that and make sure it's really well padded. So we had uh, the bubble wrap in it and then the bigger ones to make sure it was really padded. So any shocks are absorbed. And then with the hard case, obviously to make sure that it, it doesn't get damaged from any impact. But yeah, I traveled from LA all the way to Luxor here with, with my 75 and, and it's doing great. Great. And of course, that means if you can do it with the 75, you can do it with the 35 too. And oh yeah, um, easy. I've taken that to even that one to even more places. Yeah. And the and the mini, what'd you do with your mini when you traveled with it? Um, I just take it in my carry-on because then I have protection on the airplane. And um, that might just be me, but I just tell it to make it invisible. So it kind of like slips through uh, TSA. But honestly, I've never even had it like pulled out and, and looked at. It just always went through. I think you actually had an experience when they pulled it out, right? You checked like seven things in my bags that day. They, uh, yeah. I, I, I had a bad year for that. I don't know what was going on, but... Um, you know what actually gets me every time? It's the Aqua Energizer in my bag, in my carry-on. Yeah, I usually I just, pull that out. They're like, what is this? Yeah, well, I, I took... So um, there's um, there's been a lot of news in the, aqua, in the structured water industry this week. Two CEOs of structured water device companies have died. Um, and I went to visit Gary Greenfield. He was one of the ones that passed. And... Um, he gave me um, a whole bunch of things. It was like seven or eight devices that when you're looking through one of those scanners at the airport, look a little bit like an aqua energizer. And they had like seven security people all looking at the screen and they're going, somebody thinks they're making a funny joke here. This is not funny at all. And they were all like so serious. And um, it was just, it was just copper and, you know, plastic and, crystals and glass and minerals and um yeah they got they got really worked up but what i've learned is you just take your structured water device and you just put it out in the container just like you do with a computer um and um and then they don't they don't do anything yeah. with it. so that that part's pretty cool um but yeah you can travel with a with a mini and um and take it on a plane and it's easy peasy and you can travel with the 35 and 75 just check check them in a bag and make sure they're well padded Okay, last question, unless anybody has anything live. So if you do, be ready to raise your hand in just a second. Um, um, is the Cosmic Tower 
quite a bit of a step up from biogeometry. Oh, well, I don't like to compare the two. I mean, they're very complementary. They're just different approaches. I mean, the Cosmic Tower, you could look at it as a portable power spot, right? The spots that we have in nature's and temples, and you can just put this in your home and take with you. And in a sense, biogeometry is also about creating power spots. I mean, that's, that's one big aspect of it, but just through a different methodology. Now, from my point of view, they're very complementary. And as you will learn on the March 19th call, it's not like biogeometry here, cosmic tower there, but you put two, the two together and you get something that's even much more powerful. And biogeometry, all the measuring methodology really helped us because we could actually tangibly measure what the cosmic towers were doing. Now, from my own experience, Biogeometry just takes a lot more expertise to implement. You're not just going to get a book or a course and say like, oh, I'm just going to do biogeometry in my whole house now. No, no. You just need to study a lot more. And from that point of view, the Cosmic Tower is a lot more user friendly that you don't need that background to be able to create that power spot or to neutralize EMFs in your home or to structure your water. Yeah, all of that can be done with biogeometry. But from my experience, it takes a lot more studying and a lot more expertise to implement that correctly. But for me, they're very complementary. And that's the road we're going down to. And they both amplify each other and John or Theo, if you want to jump in here, I know both of you have experience with biogeometry or other people on the call, feel free to weigh in. But that's just, uh, you know, from my experience. Uh, the, yeah. Yeah, I also have the, the same uh, echo what Nico is saying. So uh, this, so it, it amp the cosmic tower and the biogeometry they do amplify the the that harmonious field mm -hmm. great and theo or john yeah go ahead john i i use them together i mean when i was visiting nico in egypt i think it was for two weeks we did biogeometry play with the tower every day we discovered something new every day mm -hmm. i think they're very well i think the tower is a harmonizer it harmonizes the environment, the thoughts, all sorts of stuff. And it will keep you moving forward in your spiritual path. I think it's more of a a spiritual tool versus an energetic tool, in my opinion, because the people I interact with that uh, experience it firsthand, they have spiritual growth that's rather rapid uh, upon getting a tower. Uh, you can harmonize that with the essence of biogeometry, which is to create energetic forms to amplify or uh, harmonize those particular areas of your body or your state of mind. It is about, biogeometry is about harmonizing the space, getting the energy of the space to flow properly in the right harmonics. All of that is sort of all tied together. And it was a beautiful compliment. We, we had a lot of fun, that was for sure. Yeah, I have um, <clears throat> a lot of biogeometry in my home and um, as well as other subtle energy technologies, quite a few. Uh, it's kind of a hobby for me, like the structured water devices that I keep buying. Um, and it's all complementary. I mean, the biogeometry gave me a way to uh, measure uh, the cosmic tower and kind of see what was going on, which was really neat. And um, like, uh, Nico said it's it's just it's like bringing a natural earth energy power spot into your home so whatever subtle energy method or technology you're using it's just going to enhance that and that that has been my experience because I my home was completely tricked out with biogeometry as much as I could uh, getting really deep into biogeometry it's requires a lot of precision i mean you can move something millimeters and it makes a big difference mm -hmm. um 
but my ho- house was already tricked out with it. And when I brought the tower in, it was just like, whoop, mm-hmm. what you could feel the field immediately. And I was like, whoa, okay, this is, <laughs> this is on another level. And it was nice because I just plopped it on a high, uh, like kind of a high bookshelf I have in the middle of the room. And then I didn't have to do anything else. It was just there and it just works. Um, so that was kind of nice. So that was my experience. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, we've gone through all our prepared questions. Does anybody have a, a question they want to ask live? I have a question about connecting with cosmic towers that you haven't purchased. So, um, so uh, there was a, we talked about in one of our Lavanya, I think it was a Lavanya call about someone, uh, uh, I'd say a spiritual healer's experience with a storm and the cosmic tower woke her up to respond. So w- can we expect with the current network or when the future network is built out to have similar experiences with other cosmic towers? Like an example would be a solar flare that if we needed to uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, respond or uh, th- then would it, uh, if we were sleeping, would it wake us up? Well, everybody's path and everybody experiences different. Right, because one person gets uh, woken up and there's a storm and she feels called to work with that, that might be something specifically for that person, but it could be something completely different from somebody else. So what I would say is like, don't have any particular expectations based on other people's experiences. Know that there are as many paths as, as there are people here and everybody has their own journey. And just allow that to unfold, because the issue is, if we go look for a particular experience, we limit ourselves to what can come in. So when we are open and the experiences can just flow to us, what is right for you will come to you. And that might not be right for me or Patter or Theo, because all our paths are individual. But just know as long as we we stay open and we have that connection with the tower, I mean, we have so many different experiences that people tell us with the tower. And some of them are very much the same, but others are so different. So I would say the tower will just adjust to your own spiritual journey and you will know when you know. (laughs) Beautiful. Anybody else? Zane, go ahead. This is a question for Nico. Um, when you were in, uh, when you saw Yvonne again, um, did she mention anything about the large tower they've set up in the center of Holland, the the four meter one, I think, or something like that? I know it took a while to establish, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't meet with Yvonne when I was um, in, in, in Germany, uh, but we did we did talk on the phone and uh, we have ongoing conversations all the time over Telegram and it's still unfolding, right? I mean, those towers, I mean, they're so powerful. They, they will gradually, uh, you know, get stronger and stronger. So... That's still in process, Zane, but I'll make sure when I talk to her next time uh, to ask her, hopefully, uh, when I get to Belgium, actually, or Holland to to go visit that location. But I did get to meet uh, one of the four meter towers myself in a location in Germany, and that, that was pretty cool. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, guys, so looking at the month ahead, two weeks from now, we'll be on the call on March 19th at three, and then we'll be back for the next Q&A a month from now, the first Tuesday of the month, like we always do. So uh, thank you for showing up today, and thank you for being part of this community. It's um, it's amazing to, to come together with you, and I, I look forward to the next opportunity. Uh, everybody have a great day. Thanks. Thank Bye-bye. you.